And new at 6, the Magic City is celebrating its 125th anniversary and remembering the women who had the vision to promote the idea that a great city could develop where the Miami River spilled into Biscayne Bay. And look what we have now, huh? As CBS <laughs> Hank Tester tells us, the Miami story is one of vision, starting with Julia Tuttle. The Magic City, 125 years old, a history like no other. Boom and bust, winter homes for the ultra-rich, hurricanes, unsung Bahamians who built the town. Later, the beginnings of a tourist town. Tourism becomes big business. The Cubans arrive. Suddenly, Miami is the Wall Street of Latin America. Early on, the developers, Flagler, Fisher, Merrick, Brickell. But there's another name. Julia Tuttle, regarded as the mother of Miami. She'd been here since 1891 and had been scheming and strategizing about how she was going to make a great city out of this wilderness. The city's 125th year celebration is much a recognition of all that's Miami, but also a celebration of Julia Tuttle's foresight that without a railroad early on, Miami would have remained a frontier outpost nestled in the mangroves along Biscayne Bay. She had a vision. That vision was to come down here, and once she got here, even before then, she said, look at the clouds, the water, the temperature. She said, this place can't miss. All we need is a connection between here and the outside world. The motivation? Tuttle's family owned land on the north side of the Miami River. Widowed, she moved to Miami permanently, purchased even more acreage, and began to campaign to convince railroad baron Henry Flagler to extend his tracks further down the coast of Florida to Miami. She got nowhere until 1894, when most of Florida was hit with a devastating freeze. As the story goes, and the Tuttle statue in Bayfront Park depicts, Tuttle sent Flagler fresh orange blossoms to prove Miami was warm, frost-free. This was proof that these were good blossoms, proof that the freeze hadn't hit this far south. Flagler agreed to build his railroad in exchange for hundreds of acres of land from Tuttle and from William and Mary Brickle. Now, Mary Brickle, Julia's equal when it came to business. Now, some consider her Miami's other mother. Well, the promise from Flagler to build a large hotel to attract tourists, well, he did it. The first train arrived in what was to become Miami on April 13th, 1896. What better land than where the river meets the bay? And that's the land that birthed the city of Miami. July 28th, 1896, the city incorporated. It happened here in a little pool hall, a process Tuttle could not participate in because at the time women did not have the right to vote. Flagler did build his Royal Palm Hotel, but Tuttle also benefited. She constructed what was called the Hotel Miami, a huge wooden structure. Then suddenly, tragedy. Julia Tuttle died September 1898. Physicians have, you know, secondhandly analyzed it as either an aneurysm or a brain tumor. Shocking to most people in the city. Just over a year later, November 12th, 1899, Hotel Miami burned to the ground. Tuttle's memory faded, but she'd planted the seed, laid the groundwork. Julia Tuttle is regarded as the only female founder of a major American city. Miami, the magic city. So happy 125th birthday, Miami. It's been quite a ride. Thanks to a very strong woman who helped get it started. I'm Hank Tester, CBS 4 News. And if you want to help celebrate Miami's 125th birthday, you can head down to Perez Art Museum. The event will take place tonight from 7.30 until 10 p.m.